Good morning, traders. Let's have a great new week. It's Monday, 20th of November 2017. Welcome to our daily real time daily trading ideas webinar. We have five days a week, five different traders. Today it's Monday, so in a couple of seconds, Jay will be the moderator. We will speak about trading ideas, strategies, market screening, and your questions will be directly answered in our webinar. Our goal is 15 to 20 minutes. So let's have a great start like every day. And of course, like every time with any webinar from other markets, we will start with a risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. If you like to start Forex and CFD trading, please start with a demo account and make yourself familiar with all about trading, long and short going, and your personal risk management. If you like to read the full risk disclaimer, just visit one of our web pages, for example, admirmarkets.com or at myMarketsGlobal.com and you will find more about that on that pages. This is me. My name is Jens. I'm based in the Berlin office and there I'm sitting right now. My English made in Germany, but hopefully some of my quality too. But like I say in any webinar here, I'm not the main speaker. The main speaker is our day trader of today. This is our scheme today. It's Monday. So today, later, it's Jay's day. On Tuesday, it's Paul's day. On Wednesday, it's Mike's day. On Thursday, it's Nenad's day. And on Friday, it's Dirk's day. Today's actions are tomorrow results. Our leading day traders live. This is what you get here. So This is Jay. He's the main speaker. In a couple of seconds, he will start. But of course, before he start, some infos about Atma Markets. We would be really happy if you like to trade Forex and CFDs, if you do it at Atma Markets. Many benefits you will get only here at Atma Markets. For example, MT4 and MT5. You choose or if you like to trade with the MetaTrader 4, the classic one, or the new advanced tool, MT5. Negative balance protection policy via Atma Markets UK. So you are protected with many, many safeguards like you will only get here at Admir Markets. Choosable leverage up to 500 and many, many more stuff at AdmirMarkets.com. You will find, of course, the details about. Also, you will find the details about our regulatory background. Admir Markets UK LTD is, of course, regulated by the FCA. And if you like to contact us, many, many ways like telephone, like email, visit our YouTube channel or our Facebook channel. A couple of hours later, all our webinars you will find recorded at our youtube.com slash Markets channel. That's from my side. And now let's have a start. Hi, good morning, Jay. Now it's your turn. Good morning, traders. Uh, good morning, Jens. Let me show my screen. Off we go. I think you can see my screen. Yeah, ready to go. Good morning, guys. Welcome to a new deem, uh, week. It's a shortened trading week. Why? because uh, we have Thanksgiving on Thursday. So the senior traders on the New York desks will head out to the Hamptons uh, Wednesday evening and liquidity will drop and uh, most of the junior guys will man the desks on Friday. So do not expect uh, significant uh, position building during this week. Um, usually I say Monday is construction day and Friday is square up day. So the problem is we have a shortened trading week. We got to get something in and on our books rather early um, and then use Thursday and Friday to uh, review some of your trading work on your uh, trade execution and see uh, how you've been faring so far hopefully if you had an up year um, it's been a pretty good year because volatility came back into the market quick review of last week's trade we were watching long cable off of bottom edges And as you can see, the uh, first trade uh, we were putting on right as we were doing the webinar. The second trade was to be a flag extension where we assumed liquidity in the third one during a FIB extension. And what came to be was that the initial one third of our position went straight to target the next day. And then off we went in terms of cable higher. So unfortunately, Fortunately and unfortunately, that's trading if you're not sitting in front of the screens all day long. If you sit in front of the screens all day long, your return on equity is going to be significantly higher than if you're swing trading and or slash position trading. That's just the nature of the game. But who wants to sit 12 hours every day in front of the screens? Now, I was up last night, um, midnight, a few minutes before midnight. I hope you're all uh, uh, subscribing to Twitter. Uh, Twitter alerted me that the FTP stepped out of collision talks in Germany and we had an immediate drop of roughly 44 pips in the euro dollar south. Uh, and we can see that this morning, this is strength versus weakness. We had in the overnight session a strength in the New Zealand uh, uh, currency and in the pound as well as in the euro. And if I look over, pound, euro, New Zealand, st still the strongest currencies this morning. 
and Japanese yen and Swiss franc were being sold off as risk sentiment turned positive. Risk events this week, we have a few, but, and I'm pulling this over live, uh, not very material. We have Draghi speaking today a couple of times. On Tuesday, we have the Aussie dollar monetary policy meeting minutes. We don't expect that much out of those minutes. And Goldman Sachs pushed out their rate expectation hike view in terms of the Aussie dollar um, uh, later. Uh, so they pushed it out. We have uh, low speaking and we have the inflation report hearing for the pound. That's really, really interesting. I'm uh, interested in listening to what the uh, talking heads have to say here because the inflation last week actually um, did not materialize at 3.2% year on year as expected. Whoever didn't watch last week's webinar can go back and look at that real quick. Um, but we came at 3.0. Uh, so inflation here in, in the UK is still uh, materially uh, higher but uh, due to the low pound, but um, uh, economists are expecting that these forces are dropping off. Then we have Yellen speaking. She's on the way out, not that materially any longer. Autumn forecast statement for the pound again. Uh, we have core durable goods orders here again. Um, this is a coincident uh, indicator. A leading indicator like the PMIs, for example, give us the direction of how we want our book to be structured, long or short, in a given uh, economy. Um, core durable goods is just a sentiment, uh, is just the coincident indicator telling us if our view is still on track or not. Uh, we have unemployment claims, uh, I was almost saying, as always, around the 240. Um, we have uh, UM revised, um, crude oil inventories, FOMC minutes here again. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on any further hints or comments that uh, were sent during the uh, actual meetings that we did not get uh, exposure to um, earlier during the live announcements. Then we have retail sales in New Zealand. That's actually expected to be a little bit higher. Um, we have uh, GDP second estimate. For those of you who don't know it, GDP numbers are always coming in threes. There's a preliminary, then a second, and then a final. So the final usually has the least impact and the preliminary usually has the most impact. So this is, I know it's red here in the calendar, but it's not as red as one may think. Then orange is actually uh, not orange. There should be red. <laughs> so you see the people who built these websites are not traders um, or whatever. ECB monetary policy meeting accounts. These are the minutes of the last ECB meeting and that's of interest to us because there were some dissenters in terms of not setting a deadline for the extension of the asset purchase program so the market will read through these minutes i.e. the analysts and the individual funds and banks will read through these minutes to see if there's any further hint in terms of policy adjustment and then unfortunately we have, I mean, fortunately for the guys in the US, unfortunately for us in terms of wanting to make more money this week, we have a bank holiday in the US. Um, we have Jordan speaking. We expect nothing new out of the SMB. And then on Thursday here, uh, we have the Canadian uh, core retail sales expected much, much higher. So that's actually uh, might be an opportunity for us, given the fact that the Americans are on holiday. We have thin liquidity. If we see any moves, we expect these moves to be exaggerated, okay? So these are the events for this week. Hello, okay, it's always uh, Fed. Minutes released on Wednesday. Uh, come focus on inflation and balance sheet reduction, which is currently on autopilot. And then here again, we currently have 91.5% probability priced in for the rate hike during the next meeting. And the forward inflation swap is at 189. And as we recall, the Fed wants 2%. In fact, I'm getting really, really worried about the flattening of the curve, the U.S. yield curve. It's a massive bear flattening, meaning the two-year rates and the short-term rates are keeping on rising and rising, whereas in the very long end, especially the 30 years, there's no inflation expectations. Um, I am, this is what I'm worried about, guys. If next year, let's say after Q2, um, commodities are coming off, what does that mean? That means prices are dropping. Um, and we continue to have this bear flattening in the curve, equities are gonna get into trouble. So mark my words on that, and let's be careful that we're not running into a scenario where um, commodity-led reflation around the globe is coming to an abrupt halt. 
Bank of England, we talked about this inflation already. We know that um, uh, uh, oil is, has increased recently in terms of price. So for November, we're actually expecting a higher uh, or slightly higher inflation again. <clears throat> but next rate hike market is expecting for Q4 2018 or Q1 2019. That's far way off. And uh, uh, currently the market this morning is positioning and buying pound. There's, we have a strong pound this morning. Why? Because um, uh, uh, there are some suggestions that uh, UK Chancellor Hammond is encouraging Prime Minister May to up her divorce settlement offer to the EU. And that's enough for the market to actually start improving. ECB minutes on Thursday. We want to see any hints in terms of the uh, purchasing uh, program and um, a future adjustment of monetary policy. Again, fundamentally, the euro, uh, the euro is a long, but given uh, the overnight stress uh, that the most important economy in Germany uh, in the EU i.e. Germany is now uh, uh, without uh, a majority government uh, that's going to may that may uh, uh, put in more uh, negative sentiment towards the euro bank of japan japan surprising to most of us seven consecutive quarters of economic growth 2.9% year on year cumulative uh, to reach their reflation goal or their 2% inflation target they would need to grow above um, potential, that's what they're doing currently, uh, for another one to two years. Highly, highly unlikely in my personal opinion. So enjoy the long Nikkei for now, um, uh, uh, but stress on the horizon. Uh, Bank of Canada, look to long bottom edges and dollar cat. Why? Um, yes, we're data dependent, uh, but there is a risk that NAFTA may not come to the final term and new terms uh, and their deadline was set uh, by the negotiators for the first quarter in 18. NAFTA is the North Atlantic Free Trade Agreement for those of us who don't know this and Trump uh, uh, started renegoti renegotiating that. And that is, uh, that is something that the Bank of Canada does not have on the radar, that this may fail. And so there's a risk, there's a downside risk for the Canadian dollar and downside risk for the Canadian dollar means long dollar cat. Currently 40% probability priced in by the market that the Bank of Canada will hike rates in December. RBA, Goldman Sachs. Yes, it's important to know what Goldman is saying. Let me repeat this. It's important to know what Goldman is saying. The trick is sometimes they're actually helping you. Sometimes they are just talking their own book. So, <laughs> but always important to have uh, to know what they're saying. Wage data for Q3 was a bit disappointing. So Goldman moved their hike expectations from May 18 to Feb 18. So Aussie dollar range bound for now. Kiwi risk premium for policy uncertainty getting priced out. And this happened live. That's where we saw overnight a strong Kiwi. So we talked the last three weeks, uh, three morning meetings, we talked about this risk premium for uh, the new leftist government coming in and expanding the mandate for the RBNZ. Now the market is realizing this is not as bad as was uh, expected because it's going to take a longer and calmer route than it was expected so it's being priced out meaning some of the shorts are covering meaning new zealand dollar is rising slight 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 signs for growing inflation and recall in the last policy assessment they said tradable inflation has increased due to the lower new zealand dollar and higher oil prices but is expected to soften in line with projected global low global inflation the name of the game when you trade currencies is inflation and inflation expectations and what rates are doing and if you trade anything besides currencies you probably also you know all of you or most of you are, are long equities um, why not read through these policy assessments that the individual central banks are handing out these are the smartest guys on earth they control your currency and the currency on all of all the other major economies and they tell you what their view is on economic growth going forward so why not read it it's usually not that much work and you know exactly if you should be long or short any of your equities in the given uh, economy smb blah 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 we're gonna highly valued swiss franc never anything new out of the swiss uh, out of the smb they continue to uh, weaken their currency. Why? Because they have no inflation. Inflation. Look at that 0.3 for 2017. And because they're not moving until the ECB starts normalizing. Very, very simple. 
So what moves the market this week? Technicals. So part of technicals is positioning. Positioning, we can get a glimpse off of the CFTC commitment of traders report. A glimpse. Why? Because currencies is an interbank uh, market. It's huge. It's gigantic. Futures is only a small portion of that. So it's only a glimpse. Please do never overestimate this. Take it as one piece of the puzzle and please never overestimate seasonality or something like that. Constantly changes based on um, policy by the individual central bank. Euro asset managers extreme long. Aha, asset managers are trend following. If they're extremely long, there's potential to squeeze them out of the market if something negative happens, i.e. last night, low overnight liquidity, we saw a squeeze uh, of these guys. Aussie dollar, same situation, asset managers extremely long. Asset managers are portfolio managers, so they're trend following. Swiss franc asset managers and leveraged, i.e. fast money, i.e. hedge funds, extremely short. So there is an opportunity in a risk off scenario for the Swiss franc to outperform, meaning rise. Yen, dealers very long and hedge funds very short. Perfect combination for a long in yen. So if we see volatility increase and risk sentiment sour, you want to be long yen in Swiss franc, maybe a little bit more aggressive than you usually do. Kiwi, dealer extreme long and leverage extreme short. So look for a squeeze higher is, extract, um, is exactly what happened last night. Rather aim for buying the Kiwi for today, tomorrow and Wednesday, and then be done by Wednesday evening if you're not a position in, uh, trader or investor. Volatility, euro up, pound up, yen up. So volatility is increase, increasing, beautiful, only means we can finally make some money again. If volatility increases, you can expect trends to last a little bit longer. If volatility really increases, even I am buying breakouts, which I never, 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 ever, ever otherwise do. VIX um, also 11.92. So we had a, a volat volatility spike on Wednesday up to 14 spot 44. Great, great trading opportunities. Risk reversals. I saw uh, some of the attendees um, are uh, part of my traders. Daniel, this is your uh, uh, bit. Risk reversals, we're looking at the three months out. And there we had some very, very clear signals on Friday evening. Euro dollar short already happened. GU long already happened. Dollar Swissy short. So risk reversals, um, uh, a beautiful thing to look at um, on a Friday evening. And then uh, start early Sunday night, Asian session. See if you can't make some pips off of the signals that the risk reversals are giving you. Amazing. Euro pound short also materialized. Okay, potential trade this week, ultra difficult for me. Seriously, last week was nice. We made some money. This week, ultra difficult. I'd rather not trade this because we don't really have position building this week. So please take this with a lot of care, okay? I'm looking to potentially short Euro Canadian dollar. Why? The so-called Jamaica coalition just broke down, uncertainty for now in terms of Germany, i.e. Europe. Yes, we had a very, very good recovery this morning. Um, we saw Euro rising, but, B-U-T, but this could be on the back of my ex-colleagues withdrawing liquidity, letting the Euro rally in order to get into shorter positions, okay? So uh, Canadian dollar, as we saw, the analysts are expecting very positive retail sales on Thursday. If oil prices bounce, this could be positive. So short Euro Canadian dollar off of top edges. Guys, keep an eye on the yield spreads and keep an eye on oil prices. This is what the trade may look like. We have a clearly defined top edge. This is a one hour chart. We're currently trading in a box, very difficult to trade at fair value uh, where we currently are, but nevertheless, start a position short, um, add to this position uh, once uh, above the daily high where we have a clearly defined upper edge and where we expect some liquidity for the big boys to enter. If it doesn't materialize, hey, it's one trade out of many. Target here is this lower bound where we expect some uh, liquidity below. And there's a square up right here and right here that hasn't materialized yet. So fundamentally, negative news out of Germany, 
this is a good trade yeah but you need to watch the ticker a little bit so hopefully not too long this time 19 minutes i'm getting a little bit better jens uh, for you i'm not here next monday maybe we can find a replacement traders for you i'm looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks then why am i not here i'm giving a seminar next monday for my uh, next trader uh, group and uh, um, i thank you all for showing up on a monday morning uh, in numerous numbers i really appreciate you guys coming in and having a look and listening to the institutional view of how we start a week on a trading desk. Thanks a lot. Jens, over to you. Yeah, all great. Our goal is 15 to 20 minutes, so daily, but a short and quick one because time is money. Thanks for now. Yes, we will find a substitute. Of course, you will be the best one for all Mondays. So hopefully after two weeks, you will be back. And uh, yeah, let's have a great start in the week. Many, many news will come in the next weeks until Christmas to our clients. Uh, we will have a great promotion campaign, a couple of days at Admar Market. So just don't forget to visit AdmarMarkets.com and you will find a great promotion campaign what coming out quite fast. Thanks for now. And if you'd like to see it again, a couple of hours later in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash AdmarMarkets. And see you tomorrow, tomorrow with uh it is paul paul is on tuesday so have a nice day bye from berlin